everybody, John Spark here and uh, my friend Polly who's a local Cambodian. Uh, on the way into the airport from uh, when we arrived in Phnom Penh, Polly was our uh, transfer guide and during the course of the journey we started to talk about her local life and Cambodia in general and it led us to a, a fascinating story, so much so that we've asked Polly to join us today to share her story as we felt so moved by it and also believe that if others hear this story, you'll learn to be uh, even more appreciative of what you've got, particularly if you're in the Western world. And secondly, to understand even more on what help can be sent to these countries like Cambodia. And uh, that is part of our journey. But without what I'll do now is just really turn it over to Polly and ask her to take up from her life when she was seven years of age. And uh, be warned, this is, is very powerful stuff. So uh, over to you, Polly. Welcome to Cambodia. I am Polly. I was born in southeast of uh, Cambodia. And during the terrible time, 1975, Khmer Rouge liberated the country. Khmer Rouge liberated the uh, force moved my family from southeast to southwest of Cambodia. And during that time, it's uh, 1975 to 1976, I still live with my family. And 1976, I am the last one from the family that Meru separated me to the fourth level camp. I am, in my family, I have three brothers, five sisters. I am the last one in the family. And during the terrible time, only three, uh, during the terrible time, 1975 to 1979, uh, I lost my brother. And my eldest brother, he was killed. I think my family is the luckier than the other family. Because only in my family, only my eldest uh, were killed. But it's uh, compared to uh, all of my relatives' the family, some of us. Uh, some of my relative family, some were killed, some died by starvation, the whole family, some were killed or died by starvation, the whole family, and some, only one or two children survived from the big family, the same, all the people in the whole country. So 1976, I am the last one that Meru separated me to the fourth labor camp. The life in the fourth labor camp about three years, I didn't know uh, where to my parents, where to my brother sister, but I live nearby one of my sister only. Uh, the life during, uh, the life in the fourth level came about three years. It's a spent long time to tell the story, but I could tell you that it's a very, very suffering life. It's a very suffering life. even. 8 to 10 years old, I get very hard work, like uh, get very hard work, like adult people, like the old people. One day I had to work from 12 to 14 hours a day. Uh, some day I feel very, very weak. Some day I got sick. But when I hear the gong, I hear the gong around around 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning. I had to wake up on time. I had to run or walk quickly to the field, to the jungle area where they show us to work there. During some day, some day I could not, uh, I could not wake up on time. I feel very, very weak. I cannot go to work on that day. I could not get food, so I feel very worried. I could, uh, I feel very worried that they didn't uh, give me some food or they will come to torture me if I don't go to work on time. So I had to run quickly. Even uh, I try to work uh, on the field all day to get the food. The food that they gave me in that time uh, gave to all the children that, that uh, live in the fourth level camp is much poorer than animal food. Yeah. I saw some people, some children try to steal some food to eat, but for me, I saw the like, sister number one or brother number one in the camp that they try to torture the children. Like some children did some mistake, stole something to eat or cannot go to work on time. So I saw the situation around me like this. I feel very frightened to, I feel very scared to steal something to eat like the other children. But 
Like I told you, I live by one of my sister. My sister is very clever. She come to she come to find me. She hide to find me very often. That she gave me some food that she stole somewhere like piece of uh, uh, piece a uh, small piece of potato or a little bit rice or raw corn, raw potato. She hide to feed me very often. The lie during the terrible time about three years in the fourth labor camp, I nearly died many, many times. But maybe the feeling that I miss my family, I miss my parents, it forced me to stand up, try to work every day. And sometimes I got very, very sick. I had one time that they sent me to one place to one place that they said that that is a hospital of the crazy of a crazy government of so called like uh, Onka that they call Onka. At one time, my sister that I told you that she lived nearby me, she I don't know how she get permission from her camp to come to meet you. She stay nearby me for two days in the hospital. The hospital in that time, just the name of the hospital only, just a throw like people cannot get uh, people cannot uh, get up uh, to work. They just throw the people in one place, keep the people in one place. And I remember one of my uh, my sister, she get permission to come to stay with me for two days. And after two days, she said it's the time that she had to go back to her camp and. I don't know how to tell you how I feel in that time. That is the uh, only one uh, that separated me from the big family. And I just, I hope at the end of my life, I just uh, stay with my sister. But today, after my sister, she said goodbye to me to work. I don't know how to detail what I feel, how to tell how I feel in that time. But, uh, 1979, that the Vietnamese come to liberate the Cambodian from Khmer Rouge. I saw people running around, some family tried to come to find the children, or children tried to run, uh, running around to find the parents, the family. I don't know where to go, I don't know how to do, but my sister that she lived nearby me, she ran to find me, and most of us both of us are trying to run from one area, from one area to one area, under the bomb of Khmer Rouge, under the bomb of Vietnamese. Vietnamese bomb from the south and uh, Khmer Rouge bomb from the north. And I saw around me many people die by bombs of Khmer Rouge or by uh, Vietnamese around us. And it's not so long, just only two days, my family, my parents, they found us and we can say I, we found them or they found us back together because after that time people try to run from one area to one area, try to find the family, try to find the children in that time. And two days after I met my parents, I don't know how to how to tell you how I feel when I met uh, after I passed the, the life in the in the fourth level time about uh, uh, about three years under the fourth job, very hard work and no food and we try to find some uh, jungle fruit or try to find the root, everything we eat instead for the food in that time and when I meet my parents, I feel very, very excited to meet my parents and my family. But after that, my father uh, about 18 days after my father, he said he decided to come to Phnom Penh City. He said only Phnom Penh City that is a good place that the people could reveal the light from zero, that he could reveal the, the light of his family from zero. On the way back from the south to Phnom Penh City on one of the main roads in Phnom Penh City, I didn't see any people live along the way. All the houses were empty. I didn't see anybody on the street, and then I feel in the world only my family in the world. At the about two hours after we arrived in Phnom City, my father he found an apartment nearby the Central Market on the east side of the Central Market. The reason that my father he 
the reason that my father he decided to to take the family to live in the apartment nearby the central market because he found he found he saw some people come to live around there about 50 families living around there so he said that we should to go to live in the apartment near the people. If the situation gets changed, we have to run or we move, move out together. If we will kill, we will kill together. So that time, uh, so my father, he decided to take his family to live there. And I would like to tell you that after the terrible time, all the houses, all the land around Phnom Penh city, or around the country, all belong to the government and the government gave free to all people to survive. 19, in the same year, 1979, we get the new government, the new government that was uh, supported by Vietnamese government in that time. In the same year, 1979, my father sent me to, uh, to school, back to school. Uh, only me in my family that my father could send me back to school, like some of my uh, brothers or sister, uh, they could not go uh, back to school. Only me get op opportunity to go to school. Because at the beginning, to reveal the lie, the people, all the people in the country have to reveal the lie from zero. And the government has to reveal the country from zero. Even uh, the regime, the killing regime, by uh, the killing regime of terrible times, uh, 1975 to 1979, it's gone. But after the terrible time, remain many, many uh, thousand orphans in the country, and every family lost, uh, lost the children, lost the parents, and people try to stand up, reveal the lie from zero. Everyone in the whole country try to stand up to reveal the the lie from zero. You see, it's a very hard. We don't know how to reveal the lie from someone. It's a very hard lie from the beginning. So my pa, my parents try to keep my sister, my brother, go to work. I try to sell something to earn the money to fit the big family from the beginning. Year by year, I went to school. Year by year, and the life of my family year by year getting better, better. Uh, because I had the whole like some brother, sister, or my parents help the family to reveal the life from zero. If we compare to some family, to some family or to some orphans at the beginning, they had very hard life from the beginning. I saw many people uh, survive. They could not get opportunity to go back to school like me in that time. I finished my high school in the year 19, uh, 1988, and from 1988 to 1990, uh, I tried to earn, to help the family to earn the money. In that time, I really want to study more at university, but the situation of my family in 1978 could not send me to study more, so I decided to stop to study. I decided to, I tried to find to get job in that time. 1990, I get job from Ministry of Tourism. Uh, one of my rel relatives helped me to get job from Ministry of Tourism in that time. And uh, I, be, I come to work for Ministry of Tourism, I become to be tour guide. If I become to be tour guide in English, uh, tour guide in 1990, I would like to tell you too, how could I learn English during 1979 till 1990? 1979, the country liberated, my father sent me to school, and 1981-82, some English class, some secret private, uh, some private secret private English class start to open, so I try to learn English in secret private class. In that time, the government didn't allow the people to learn foreign languages like English, like French, because the, Vietnam, uh, the government just uh, allowed the people to learn uh, uh, Vietnamese and Russian at the public school only, but I had to learn English during that time, and we can call during that time it was a communist time. So my, I got the, I could speak English that I had to learn in secret private class. 1990, I got job 
from Ministry of Tourism, I was the tour guide in that time. And 1990, tourists just start to come to Cambodia only. And year by year, tourists are getting higher, higher, year by year. But the 1990 till 1999, the country still has big problems with the war. So sometimes tourists are getting down, getting down, sometimes getting higher. And until the year 19, uh, 1997, with fighting between two political parties around the airport, around Phnom Penh city, and, and in that time, tourists go down until zero. Tourists start to come to Cambodia again in the year 1999, and my job getting better, better. I get more job year by year until today. So the the life that I tell you, the my uh, from one gener from one generation to one generation, like the life before the terrible time uh, and during the terrible time after the terrible time, especially is uh, my life during the terrible time, like three years in the post level time. I never dream. I never dream. I have a, a good chance. I have opportunity to get a good job like today. I have uh, opportunity to meet you and give me, uh, give you, uh, tell the, the sto my story, what happened to me, what happened to my family in that time. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Polly, can I just ask a couple more questions? Approximately how many people went missing during the terrible time? I mean, it was in the millions, wasn't it? Uh, the, uh, the statistics that research by Vietnamese government, the, uh, the people missing, the people missing more than three million. Uh, the people die more than three million. Some were killed, some died by starvation. In the population of the people, more than seven million. Seven million. So your population dropped from about eleven million down to three or four million. Uh, uh, you see about 50 percent, about 50 percent. The statistic around 1975, we got the statistic of 7 million, but in fact the people knew that there were more than 7 million at that time, because a lot of, a lot of people live in the room in the country, some, uh, some area that were liberated by Khmer Rouge, or some area that get big from from Khmer Rouge, the people start to be, try to remove their family from that area, come to live around the Phnom Penh city, around the outskirts of Phnom Penh city, all along the street. So mm -hmm. we didn't get the real statistics, all the people in the whole country, but the statistics that the government could uh, get in that time, just about 7 million. But everyone knew that more than 7 million people in that time. Mm -hmm. But after the terrible time, people survived just about 4 million people. Uh -huh. Try to play it down a little bit. So you, you shared a story about when you were on the end of a fishing net with your, with, uh, when you were in the terrible, in the labour camp. Remember you're on the tiptoes. You'd like to tell us a little bit about that? That was, um, you were eight years old or nine years uh, old?